The Connection Show, inspiring hope, help, and healing, sponsored by Braveheart Workshops. And joining me today, I believe it's North Carolina, is my good friend, Nancy White. Welcome, Nancy. Oh, thank you, Jill. And did I get that right, North Carolina? Yes, it's North Carolina. All right. Well, welcome to the show and welcome everyone on this beautiful day today in Branson, Missouri. Before we begin, though, we'd love to let you hear a word from this amazing sponsor of our show, Holy Hydrogen. Hydrogen water and breathing in hydrogen rejuvenates your cells for optimal health. When you get this machine to improve your health, use the promo code BRAVEHEART today so you get $100 off this amazing wellness product. So listen in now. Hydrogen is used by health professionals as a powerful antioxidant and the number one tool to fight inflammation. Studies show therapeutic potential in cancer, diabetes, digestive, and heart issues, and essentially every organ and system in the body. This is not medical advice, because I'm not your doctor, but if you have any health concerns, I strongly recommend that you learn more about hydrogen. Get educated at holyhydrogen.com and order the best hydrogen generator known to man. Use code BRAVEHEART for $100 off your order. Because hydrogen is the smallest molecule in existence, it can pass through the cell membrane and even the blood-brain barrier to clear out inflammation and free radical damage where other antioxidants just can't get to. Visit holyhydrogen.com to see the latest technology that elevates your immune system and fights inflammation. Search their research library to see if hydrogen has a track record for helping a health concern you're dealing with. Make sure to use code BRAVEHEART for $100 off your order. Remember, holyhydrogen.com. The Connection Show. Inspiring. Hope. Health. Healing. Connecting the dots of your story and transforming your life. Sponsored by... Brave Heart Workshops, live with Jill Reynolds. Well, welcome back. Isn't that amazing how that hydrogen product works? And people that have connective tissue issues with rheumatoid arthritis, connective tissue, lupus, uh, Lyme disease, or just anything that you need. Hydrogen is so much needed in our cells, so check that product out. Well, Nancy... We met recently in this amazing group called Win Win Women, and you are a show host. You have your own show, and I just joined myself, and it's just so wonderful to connect with you. Oh, thank you, Jill. I am so grateful that our paths have crossed, and um, I found an amazing resource in you that I can share because you and I both know the best marketing tool there is is to tell a woman. We will share good news, and I'm going to share all about you. <laughs> well, we can't wait. So everyone, sit back and relax, because Nancy has an amazing story of transformation in her own life, and we hope when you listen to her story, your life will see the similarities as well, and you will find transformation in your life as well and grow and become the best you you can be. So Nancy, take us on a journey to little Nancy in your childhood and take us through grammar school, junior high, high school, college if you went, and then how it led you into the amazing woman of God you are today. Oh, thank you, Jill. And um, when you asked me that question, I all of a sudden had all these flashbacks. And so, um, but I was born and raised in Charlotte and my parents had moved to, to the South from the North, but um, I had three brothers and I was next to the youngest. And so for my childhood, it was just, you know, back in those days in the, the late 50s. Um, but my dad got sick um, when I was almost nine years old, Jill. And so he had um, a disease that nobody had really heard very much about. But anyways, there was a journey and he tried some experimental treatments and things. But I can remember nine years old, I was in the third grade in November, and he was finally coming home from Duke Hospital with my mom, and I got to play hooky that day, Jill, and I was sitting on the front steps, and I remember the sunshine on that beautiful fall day, and, 
and the micro uh, bus, the Volkswagen micro bus came down the street. And I was so excited. And I ran down the um, sidewalk, opened the door, but my dad was not there. And that's when I learned that he had died and he would not be coming back again. Oh. So he left my mom with four children to raise by herself. Now, remember, all their relatives were in the north. So she was here all by herself. Okay, so, so, then, so this is where we pause. Okay. <clears throat> So okay. Holy Spirit tells me when to pause, okay? So let's go back for just a moment. What you just shared is very emotional and very, um, uh, it, it, it affects you for life, very traumatic. Mm -hmm. So if you're willing, and if you're not, that's okay. I always tell people only go as deep as you choose to go. Mm -hmm. So let's go back to that little girl because, again, I believe that God gives us the gift of parables, accounts, and stories so others' lives and our own can transform. And uh, an amazing man that I met, Dan Allen, he, he, I was taking a, a class with him, uh, Healing the Wounded Heart, and he explained this. So let, let's let, listen to this and let's go deeper. He explained that when we tell story at a helicopter view, it's difficult to really connect that into the soul, but when we land the plane, mm -hmm. it's almost like we wrote a play. So can we go back, if you're willing, to landing the plane to that little girl that was so excited that day and when the door opened. Let's go back to her and talk in her voice and share with us what that little girl went through. It was a real shock, um, Jill, and I can remember not understanding. Um, and then I do remember the days afterwards, um, you know, the, the kindness from neighbors coming in to, you know, just try to show their respects and sympathy. And my mom was um, brave um, during that time, but I would every once in a while, like catch her in the bathroom and she would be crying. And so um, it was a time of not knowing and, you know, what to expect and going through um, a grieving process that you don't even know as a child, because if you've never gone any time, we've never gone through anything before it's new to us. And we have to go through, you know, that own grieving process. So I remember, um, you know, just being confused. But I also remember being angry about rejection. And that's something I think death does to a lot of people, whether people, they have no control over it or not, but it's still a rejection. Um, we feel like it. that's the only thing that we could name it or, or um, you know, and so. Um, and, 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 and abandonment, too. But I mean, I guess what I'm saying, though, too, I want, I'm still like confused a little. So, okay. so as you're standing there on that curb oh. and the door mm -hmm. opens up mm -hmm. and your dad's not there. What what is said to you? I mean, do you remember words? I mean, what did they say? Did they just say dad's still in the house? I mean, what words came out of your oh, mouth? Oh, yeah. I, I, okay, okay. Uh, so I said, where is dad? And then my mom said, he won't be coming home. Um, he's died. And so that was, you know, the first words that were spoken to me. And then, you know, the whole process of getting her out of the car and, and my um, uncle that well, we called him an uncle that was helping her. So she didn't drive home by herself. So that was good. But those were the first words, Jill. Wow. And do you remember, I mean, do you have a memory at all of how you responded to that? Do you recall, like, did you start crying? Did you yell? Did you just kind of go in your bedroom and hide? I mean, do you remember any of that at all? I think I just went in and stayed beside my mom. Okay. I just stayed with her. Mm -hmm. Wow. Cause that, I, and I'm asking so many of the questions because I have a little 10-year-old granddaughter and a um, uh, eight and six. And I, I know unequivocally, unequivocally, if that was my son and it was Addie or Sadie, mm -hmm. they would have been off the chart, like free, freaking out because mm -hmm. they're so connected to my son. I mean, like so connected. I, I mean, I, I can't even imagine how they would have responded. So I'm just really like my heart in empathy of your little nine-year-old self. So my heart just goes out to you. So let's go on. I know I got stuck there, but that is like 
that's a huge part of your life journey, a huge part. It is, and it continues on because my oldest brother, John, and I were the closest, and he always had wanted to be a Dr. Jill. In fact, I was going to be a nurse because I had a Nurse Nancy book. But anyways, we would do pretend surgeries and stuff, you know, and just, you know, during time. Well, fast forward, when he got out of high school, he joined the Navy to become a doctor. It was a great way for him to go through medical school um, and have it paid for. And so uh, while he was studying to be a doctor, he was learning to use a microscope. And he had a friend that was a nurse learning to be a nurse. And she drew some of his blood. And he was, you know, doing the whole examination about red blood cells, white blood cells and all these things. And he discovered that he had an enormous amount of white blood cells and discovered his own leukemia and lived two years longer. So that was another time where, again, I've gone through a lot of death in my lifetime. And um, but I was really heartbroken. Um, And just as my mom, I mean, any mother that loses a child, I don't care how old they are, you know, goes through that reminder every single day. And And so how old were you? When your brother, I was, I was a senior in high school. And And so so I was just great 1970. So I was graduating high school, but, um, and so again, so let's take you back to that story. So you get the phone call. How, how do you get told about your brother? And this time, what was your reaction? Yeah. So I can remember I was in my bedroom and, um, and my mother had called because um, he had also been at Duke Hospital, but he had moved. Um, they had moved him back to a hospital in Charlotte. And at that time, he was married and he had a, a, a child, a little boy that was 12 months old. And so Claire, his wife, um, called our home to let us know that John had died. And it was just like um, I remember the shock, the disappointment. Um, the anger, just feeling, you know, it's not fair. This precious little baby boy is going to grow up without his father. In fact, he never really got to know his father or remember his father. So those were some different kinds of emotions um, that were going through my being um, at that time, Jill. Mm-hmm. Now, did you have other siblings as well, or was he your only only sibling? No, I had two other brothers. I still have two other brothers. So I was Three boys and one girl. So when when all this started to ha- happen in your family, what was the name of your father's disease? Do you recall? It was. It was Hodgkin's, which is now curable. And the leukemia that my brother died of is now curable. So I really believe that there is a place for medicine in our lives. Even though I'm all about natural health and wellness, again, there's still a place um, for for, for medical um, intervention. So both of them were leukemias, your father and your brother. They were both blood cancers. Uh-huh. Blood cancers. Wow. Wow. So, um, you know, we'll talk about that later because I've discovered a lot of new stuff on celiac disease that mm-hmm. untreated leads to uh, colon cancer and um, leuke- like a le- leukemia, blood diseases of the colon with celiac. Mm-hmm. So anyway, so, so through this nine-year-old and then fast forward to your brother was there anything other significance that you'd like to share from from um little nine-year-old nancy before you got Mm -hmm. into that little 17 year old that you remember anything like it's good the bad and the ugly so that you recall i do a good thing was that um my mom had been a widow um and then when I was also a senior in high school, it was a big year. My mother married a retired Episcopal priest and he was 80 and she was 50. And so <laughs> that was another whole story. And Jill, they had to get married three times before it was legal. They ran off to Mexico. But anyways, but he was a charismatic, um, renewed, refreshed and refueled um, priest. And so that was where I got to meet Jesus. And so from that um, relationship and, and encounter was the time when I was, again, about 18, got to know, um, be introduced to Jesus because I became the chauffeur for them. And they, because he was still ministering and I would drive up and down the East Coast to Miami to all the way to uh, Maine. And, you know, they would be full gospel businessmen in different places, you know, they would be ministering. So 
I was the chauffeur. And so in one of those events in Arlington, Virginia, we were at a, a dentist home. And so they, I wanted to just stay in my room while they had their meeting. <laughs> and so they invited me, you know, to be a part. And, and so I uh, just, you know, well, I wasn't going to be a rebel. I thought, uh, yeah, I'll go sit with them. Well, I went to go sit with them. <laughs> And I ended up being prayed for and just feeling that beautiful hot oil just go down from my head to my toes with the Holy Spirit just, you know, touching me. Um, and so that was another event when I was around that age that I got to meet Jesus. Now, was that before or after your sister, uh, sis, um, the passing of your brother? Mother? died? Mm -hmm. It was before because... He also, uh, Father Sherwood also ministered to him while he was in the hospital, and he also accepted the Lord. Wow. So you really needed this man in your life at a really critical time when you probably felt really hopeless and started to wonder, why is all these loved ones being taken from me? I would assume, right? Would you, would you agree with that? It is. I, I believe when you reflect back and you see the timing of what God allows in your life and brings into your life is part of that whole big puzzle. Another piece. Well, and Satan is the destroyer of life. So Satan wanted to take your loved ones from you so you would feel hopeless. But then God brings hope into your life by bringing this new father into your life at a time that you needed him most before your your brother's passing, I believe. I agree with you. Wow. Well, that's a lot to take in for 18 years. So take us then from 18 years. So now the Holy Spirit's filled your life. Your mother is feeling a peace with a new husband. You've got a new stepdad. What takes place in Nancy's life after 18? Well... Let's see. I had been dating this young guy um, during the last couple of years of high school, and we dated for about six years altogether, and we decided we were going to get married. <laughs> and so we got married, and that lasted two years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so we used to ride Harleys. We used to do things, you know, um, and he was, it, during that time, you and I were both talking about, you know, the movie we've just seen recently was back in that time. So he was into drugs and he was into doing things um, that, you know, it was just that lifestyle that was going on, you know, at that time. But he just really um, decided after being married about two years that he really wasn't ready to be married. And so that was another rejection. That was another time of going through um, disappointment. And I will tell you, by that time, the walls are coming up around my heart. And so uh, they're being built. And um, so we, um, I continued on. We didn't have children. And it was interesting because right after we had gone through a divorce, he was killed instantly on a motorcycle wreck. Oh. It broke his neck. Um, oh, my gosh. And so that was another... <laughs> experience of death um so even you know, though you life. even though you were divorced there's still mm -hmm. that love in your heart because you know when 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 we get married uh, you know I, I hate to say this even when you're not married and you have intercourse it's a soul connection and mm -hmm. so there's this this the soul connection with that in, with that um sexual encounter so even if you had divorced, there was still a, a soul connection with mm -hmm. your former husband. So here now, you have yet another loss? Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. And you know, it doesn't matter even if there's a divorce. That pain is still there. Oh, Nancy. Yeah. That's so sad. Yeah. Now, when you were mm -hmm. married to him and he was into drugs, did he try to get you engaged with drugs? And did you take a journey yourself? <laughs> down that path for any time? There was some smoking of marijuana, but not what he was doing. He was doing harder things. In fact, um, I had found a stash of heroin underneath my kitchen sink that he had hidden. Um, but no, I wasn't into the harder stuff. Um, but I did, you know, try, you know, just smoking uh, marijuana some. But, you know, that was, that was the, I didn't like needles. 
Yeah, me neither. Now, <laughs> was he high when he got in the accident, or was that never discovered? A toxicology. He was. He was. He was drunk. He, he was, was drunk. He was probably high and drunk, but yeah, he 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 was leaving a bar um, when he had the accident. Wow. And so you were. Let me think. Eighteen, nineteen, 20, what about twenty-four years old at this time? Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Oh my goodness sakes. So, but you had still invited Jesus into your heart, so he was still still tugging at your soul and your heart and the spirit was trying to really pull you to him so what took place after the loss of him and your journey after that first marriage i moved back home and so um i decided you know i was going to move home um since we had dissolved you know our our marriage and and i didn't want to stay in the house by myself so just you know i moved back home and continued to draw closer to the Lord then. I mean, you know, it's just sort of like you sit on that fence for a while, Jill, and then all of a sudden, you know, either they say get off the pot or whatever. But anyways, you just have to make that decision. So I started really going back to church and doing things with my mom and uh, my stepfather. And we went to a charismatic Lutheran church. And that was back in the time when they had the guitars, the drums, and all these kinds of things, you know, um, where the Holy Spirit was moving. And so that was where I met my second husband. <laughs> and, so, um, and I'll tell you now, I have on my third, but this is it. Um, so anyways, but I remember we I met my second husband um, and we, we dated for about six months or so. And I'm going to tell you, that's one of the things that I love for people to know. When you meet somebody at church, it doesn't mean that they're the best it for you. You really have to get to know each other and make sure that it's right. But I had two beautiful children. Um, and then we did go through a divorce um, because he was just, a, you talk about codependence and stuff, but he was a workaholic, but he was also into mixing prescription medication with alcohol. Mm. Wow. So another numbing out husband. And so mm -hmm. you went through, you saw that and you empowered yourself and you got out of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so then we went to counseling, went through all kinds of things. But, you know, at the end of the day, you and I both know we cannot change anybody else. You know, that's why self-care is called self-care. And, and there's areas in our life that, we you know, when we go through sometimes and we see that there's challenges, that's why there's more than just us. We get to be able to reach out and ask for help and guidance and direction, but we have to want it. And we have to decide in that amazing computer up here first um, and foremost that we're going to change. We're going to do something not for anybody else, but for ourselves and our own self-love, Jill. Well, thank you for sharing that. And I guess, you know, because again, a lot of this show, Nancy, is it's it's based on helping the person listening it's not about putting us in the limelight it's really about the listener that hears the story so one thing i want to just pause a moment to help the audience is on codependency in a relationship like nancy just said when you're in a relationship it's supposed to be interdependent and so it's supposed to look like this and so when it becomes codependent and enmeshed, it looks like this. And so what develops them is when one person says, I want change. And so if let's say Nancy says, I want change. She schedules that appointment with the therapist and drags him along because he probably didn't want to come. So you mm -hmm. begin that therapeutic process. So what starts to happen is this. He's, the codependency starts to pull apart and the persons will do one of two things. They'll either grow together and stay interdependent or one will come up here and the other will come down here. When that occurs, if the person down here doesn't do their own work and come up here, it, it's not going to work. Or if the person up here sees the person down here is not and then they fall back down here and become enmeshed again, it doesn't work. So that's where the breakdown of a relationship occurs when it's codependency. 
Great analogy. Great visual, Jill. And I'm, that just helps so many people understand really what it is to have that um, unhealthy codependency. So now you're 24, let's see, like 24, 25, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30, you're 31, <laughs> 32 years old-ish, somewhere around there? <laughs> Yeah, so, well, no, I had my children, let's see, when I was 30 and 34, so then, Mm -hmm. um, so now I'm probably in my late 30s, and, you know, and I was a single mom for about mm, almost five years, and it was a wonderful time. Um, My mother was a great help with them when when they were little, and I was so blessed that I never had to put them in daycare, that I used other mothers, we bartered, and we did things to help each other. I did different businesses from home, so I didn't have to go um, to a job. Um, so I found ways um, to be able to raise my own children um, and just have those times. And it's interesting because now they're like 40 and 37 <laughs> and they look back and they just are very grateful and thankful for the times that we got to have together. And I tell people, I say, yep, I raised my children. We all live to tell them we still love each other and like each other. <laughs> That's amazing. So now tell me five years later, you're raising the kids. And then what happens in your life five years later? Okay. We're sitting on the back row of church because I was doing children's church and um, it was in March. And so the chapel was full. And so um, this gentleman came in and he's looking all around for a place to sit. So I moved our coats over so there could be a place on for him to sit. Well, we've been together now 32 years. <laughs> And of course, when he sat down, you looked over and said, wow, he's kind of cute. <laughs> no, I didn't say that. I just... <laughs> I'm teasing you. I know. No, no. But, remember, but, remember, those, but... remember those walls? Remember the walls that are, you know, yeah, now but, they're but how, So how did the relationship start, though? You're, I know you invited him to sit down, but what took place there? There's a big gap. So, so after church, um, you know, he introduced himself and I introduced myself. And so then next, the following Sunday, he was back. And so that was the first time he had visited the church. And so he was back the next Sunday. And then he asked me, he said, my son and um, her, his girlfriend are going to go to another church for a dinner concert or whatever. Would you like to go? And so he invited me to go. And so then the following week after that, you know, he came and he picked me up. But there was no son and his girlfriend. So they <laughs> they bailed. <laughs> so anyways, so that's when we started going out and we never stopped. Wow. Wow. So he was smitten to you the moment he sat down in that, in that pew. I guess so. Even (laughs) with the children. (laughs) Well, that's amazing. So fast forward now from your 32 years of marriage with this lovely man that you're married to and your children. Um, I know you're going through some tough times again with some illness in the family. if, If you're comfortable sharing, if not, that's okay. Did you want to share any of that or it was, is that too well, personal? It's, it's not too personal because I think other people always will learn from what we're going through. So my son that was in the Navy for almost 14 years um, went through some health challenges last November that were unexpected and had emergency surgery. Um, and so we're going through, you know, the, the veterans and a lot of people can identify with this. You know, the VA has their own system and every way they do things. Well, they ended up, um, he had started out with one doctor, the surgeon for the emergency surgery. And then they applied for an extension because the whole process was not finished yet. And so that was denied, um, Jill. So we had to start all over again with a brand new doctor and start the whole process again. So now it's been December, January, February, March, four months, where if you and I had gone through that um, challenge, it wouldn't be taking us four months. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot, you know, I can bless and release a lot of things. um, And, you know, when anger and stuff wells up or things that aren't right or whatever, again, we get to learn those ways to, to release that or decide how long we want to stay bent out of shape. But in the meantime, I'm praying for God's medical miracle for him. And I'm going to um, be going to help again. I went down for about three weeks. My husband and I did and cook, clean, took care of the baby and did things to help just give a break and release. Um, 
And also, because every time we get to touch and be around somebody, we get to lay hands on and pray for them. <laughs> and so, so you know, may, but, may I ask his first name so we could pray for him? Surely it's Christopher. So everyone, if you are a believer of God and you believe in the power of prayer, let's really pray up Christopher and the struggles. It, it's, it's mainly an illness that's causing severe, severe pain in his body. And he needs complete, total healing because I, I know from my own pain from my car accident that when we're in pain, it's very difficult to have emotional, even spiritual energy mm -hmm. to get through the day and give to our family members. So as a new father with a baby, no matter how much he adores the baby and his wife, it's really hard to have any energy to give to those loved ones and, and, you know what happens to the enemy wants to, to steal, kill, and destroy, um, Nancy. And so mm -hmm. I find what happens when we're in chronic pain is we exhibit um, enormous amounts of anger. And it mm -hmm. comes out sideways towards the loved ones. And then the loved ones are victims of our outrage. And I say that because I've done that so much to my mm -hmm. husband with my pain. And let's just pray up that Christopher's emotions can stay mm -hmm. balanced and that the pain level will subside so healing will take place with his whole family, Father God. So I just pray up Christopher and your family, Nancy, with what they're going through. And, and you too, to have the um, endurance, endurance to be there because as a mom, when you see your child suffering, it's like, oh... I, I can just imagine when you get there and you see him in pain, it's like your heart just hurts for him. Mm -hmm. So I pray you up too, what, that you'll have courage and endurance to go through these next, um, you know, 20, 30 days there in mm -hmm. healing. So let's, let's take that. And uh, for just a moment, I want to pause and show the audience your bio. So Nancy White has an amazing company that she's, connected to it's called and her her website is called the healthy cells chick dot com and so nancy take us now to how you started this and what you're doing for health and wellness oh uh, well jill first and foremost thank you for your prayers and I, I receive it and i also believe it and agree with you in jesus name Okay, so I have been over a 40-year researcher in natural prevention, and I know that you can guess why, because I love helping cancer thrivers and those people that are going through some challenges. We get new bodies every six to eight years, so you might as well make a new good one, thus the healthy cells, and it's C-E-L-L-S. Um, so when you and I are just knowing that we're taking care of these temporary temples until we get our permanent maintenance-free one, but it's more important that it's fireproof. It is all about that mind, that body, and that spirit. And we have to nurture all three every single day. My mom, who lived to be 96 before she moved on to be the Lord, was the, quote, health nut. And so we were doing some things, using some alternative things, colloidal silver and stuff like that growing up. So I had been a researcher to finding out especially the importance of keeping the pH um, alkaline, keeping any inflammatory foods, you know, out of our body. Managing stress so it doesn't manage you. And there's healthy ways, you know, how important sleeping is, water. So there's not any one thing. So I love talking with people and discovering what they are doing for their healthy lifestyles and celebrating them and celebrating what they're doing, Jill. And then just talking with them and finding out an area that they may need to have a little tweaking or enhancing you know, you and I have never been this age before. I've never been almost 71, and I want to continue to age with strength and vitality. The best, I could say we do our best and God will do the rest, but there's a part for us to do. But that was where my business really started from. I mean, I worked with corporate America. I started businesses from the ground up and everything. But for the last 17 years, this is what has been really nurturing others and nurturing myself to be um, a servant and using my gifts and talents. Mm. So tell us a little bit about what it is that, um, what, what are you offering people? What do you do? So if someone says, wow, Nancy is this beautiful at 71. I want what she has, or I want my body to be healthy so the Holy Spirit can flow mm -hmm. through me. 
what is it that you offer? And so when they go to your website, what will they find? They'll find a couple of quizzes, which is always a great way. I tell people, this is what you need to do. You just need to stop for a moment. And we just need to assess, you know, where we are. There's a great quiz for stress evaluation and also for your own healthy um, well-being. And you can just take that quiz and get some great suggestions for those different areas. That's always a great place to start is just to stop for a moment and do that overall evaluation of where you are today and what it is that is important and a priority um, for you to um, incorporate or in, to just enhance or to tweak. That says we age, we, we're going to keep tweaking things, Jill. So going to my website, and they can also schedule a, just a, a consultation that's all about them. I'm not going to try to sell them anything. I have partnered with a, a billion-dollar American-based company uh, for different reasons um, because remember that pH and those different things that we need to make sure we're, we're taking care of and rebalancing. I mean, that's one of the things. I don't believe in balance because we're not living, <laughs> but we keep prioritizing and pacing and adjusting and shifting. Mm -hmm. So that was a long answer to your question, but I am a girl. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So uh, I, I, one last thing I'll say, because you're using the word balance. And so it is very hard to stay in balance because so many things mm -hmm. shift throughout the day. One, one um, and people can email me if you want this, so feel free. My email address, Nancy, is braveheartworkshops at gmail.com. And my website is braveheartworkshops.com. But if you go to my, if you are interested in this, I created this after being in treatment for my eating disorder. And what you do is on one side of a piece of paper, you put everything in life you binge on. And on the other side, you put everything in life you restrict. So as your days get out of balance, you can look at it throughout the day and go, what am I binging on today and what am I restricting? So for example, I'll give an example. If today, and this is my hardest one, oh my gosh, my hardest one. Today I'm binging on busyness, like over scheduling, busy, busy, busy. And so when I, and I started Ubering and Lyft driving. So if I'm running around in my car all day long, busy, busy, drive, drive, drive. What happens is I get out of balance and I restrict and I, I don't take time to drink enough water or eat a healthy meal because I'm in the car all day and so I don't want to stop every five minutes and pee. So I'm not drinking enough fluids. And so I, my body gets out of balance. So at the end of the day, it's really hard to get myself into a rhythm before bed because it's like, uh, like this. So a balance sheet of binging, restricting, you could put in like I binge on TV, I binge on sex, I binge on, on busyness, I binge on anxiety, I binge, binge, and then what I, I restrict. And then you look at those two columns to see how do I get back in balance? It's a phenomenal spreadsheet if anyone wants it. I love it because anytime we write something down, it's like even when we journal and, you know, we're 80% more likely to accomplish those things when we write them down, it reinforces. But I love that you have the visual because when you people are doing that, Jill, then they're actually seeing in writing, this is a picture of me. And this is me. And like, it's all about me. I'm the boss of me. <laughs> and so, but I think that's a wonderful tool that you're using and that you're promoting um, because, you know, people just go on and on and on and we just get, you know, absorbed sometimes and sucked right into everyday living without even stopping to say, am I really living to my fullest? I'm very curious, and so I have to ask, I really want to know about your collagen elixir. Can you share with us about your collagen, and I think I said it right, elixir? It is, it's correct, and there's, um, on my show last time, I, my topic was the mystery of collagen. So the collagen elixir is a marine-based, and it's liquid. It comes from Norway, There's and it's highly absorbable, but it tastes like white grape juice. It reminds you of taking communion <laughs> grape juice years ago. But um, and so but it's amazing, not only for your hair, skin and nails, but for your joints. And and I did ballet for nine years growing up and my mom had to put me around other girls. I was around boys all the time. <laughs> so anyways, but my knees used to grind. And so now I feel like the Tin Man on The Wizard of Oz. I've been oiled. 
And so, but it is really great because our body stops making collagen in around 30s or so. And so it's really one of the most important proteins to have in our body. Again, it's like the glue that keeps us together. So you can put a little bit of this in your protein drink in the morning, right? Can you mix it? I just drink it. I just drink it because it just, you just chill it and just drink it. um, And it's liquid. You could put it in your protein drink, but I just, for some reason, I think sometimes when we just, have something by itself for a few minutes but you could you could put it in your protein drink if you wanted to well the one thing i'm looking for i've tried so many products i use rodan fields for my skin products to keep my skin nice but no matter what i've done i cannot get rid of these these big these circles big, the big, no oh. it's like these big huge oh, under here bags. it's like and it's like the skin and i no way do i want plastic surgery nor botox and i want natural and I just okay. can't get rid of them. And I just had um, cataract surgery, which could lead me to maybe not needing glasses as much. And then they'll show up. And it's like I hide behind them with my glasses. But they drive. It's it's funny. I'm finally at that healing place in my life, Nancy, of really like seeing myself. It's taken me years. And so I never noticed any anything in my body that didn't seem like I don't know if it didn't look good or did look good I either or but I'm getting to that healthy part of my soul where I see myself now and I'm like ah I want to do something about this where my sister saw all these flaws in her life and she was always fixing them and I was like I don't care so does the collagen help in that this arena It does. And we've also got some very natural eye cream that has um, some incredible things in it that help with that, too. So that combination of using this amazing eye treatment um, and also the collagen. I'll send you some before and after pictures of some women that have had that same challenge. Okay, because Rodan says that and I've tried it and it it still doesn't do anything. So anyway well, it- well every everything i'll tell you is fun because you know you can try it and for 30 days it always has a money back guarantee so i tell people try it for 30 days be faithful about it you take a before and after picture of yourself because you and i look at ourselves every day but when you take a before and an after picture and you compare them that's when you can see the difference well, I will do that. And you guys reach out to Nancy. You can tell what amazing chick she is. And, and you know, and join and tell us now, what is your show? Your show is called The Healthy Cells Chick. And tell us so they can find you and when, you, when your show is. It's on Win Win Women TV. So it's Win Win Women dot TV. And my show is on, I film every Wednesday night at 7 uh, p.m. Eastern. But everything is evergreen. So you can go to the winwinwomen.tv and you can find my show. And you'll see all the different episodes and the different um, titles. But that's a great way to be able to go and just look through and see, um, you know, what interests you. Um, because, I mean, you and I both know we've got so much information and things and wisdom and guidance to share with people. But they can only want to see what is interesting for them. Mm. so definitely follow nancy so thanks again for being on the show nancy we love it um i'm going to end with a commercial on products that have really helped me too nancy there's so many great products out there Mm -hmm. and and i um i came across this company i'll just tell you real quickly when um i was put on some medication for anxiety depression and i caught i caught a, a like a facebook thing that came across that said Amari Global, the mental wellness company. And I went, wow, what's this about? And I researched it to find out that Hip Train, the CEO, owned a company, a technology company in California with 5,000 employees. And in his busyness became an alcoholic. And he went to treatment. And of course, they wanted to put him on antidepressants and he refused. So when he got out of treatment, he decided to sell his company for millions of dollars. And he hired Dr. Sean Talcott, to um, formulate his first products called the Fundamentals. And the first year out the door, they won the Nutra Awards against 8,000 other products on the market for the best finished products for mental wellness. So I'm gonna play that commercial before we leave, Amari Global. 
So if you're struggling with anything, mental wellness or, um, yeah, check out Amari Global. It's phenomenal. They beta tested it actually with PTSD veterans and saw a 66% reduction in PTSD. So I'm sold out on this company as far as that. So each company has their own niche. Um, we're going to end with that commercial and our outro, but keep in touch with Nancy, please. Any final words, Nancy? Oh, Jill, I'm so grateful for the time together today. Thank you so very much. And I hope that it has given somebody encouragement and hope to continue on, even if they're in the midst of all these challenges, that they can call out to somebody else and, again, ask for help, accept it, and do something about it. Mm. Well, thank you. And everyone, when you watch this commercial, at the end, go to my website, which is braveheartworkshops.com. Click on the Affiliate Partners tab, and that will take you directly to the video and information on Amari Global to learn more. Thanks again, Nancy. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for you joining The Connection Show. Amari Global is the mental wellness company. In 2018, Amari won the Nutra Award for the world's first award-winning gut-brain access nutrition system for their flagship product, the Fundamentals Pack, clinically proven to increase good bacteria in the gut and incredible benefits. Amari means love and there is love in every bottle. Mental health matters and Amari is the mental wellness company. Prepare your body's gut microbiome for optimized mental wellness with a reboot and get yourself back to feeling joyful and motivated with mood. Round out your daily nutrition with GBX Food Systems. Crush your daily to-do list each day with EDGE. Support your digestion and immune system with digestive, probiotics, omega, and Vita GBX supplements. Fuel your mental edge with our mental fitness pack. Feel like your best self with the happy hormone pack. Unlock your brain's potential with happy neurons with the happy mind pack. And combine these products for an ultimate day with the happy juice pack. For weight loss and energy, order the transformational pack. Our kids pack is the first comprehensive mental wellness pack for kids and teens. For a complete mind and body nutrition system, get your kids these today. Begin your wellness journey with Amari Starter Pack and save. Start with the Entrepreneur Pack if you're serious about making an impact on your mental, physical, and financial wellness. Launch your Amari business with all our top products, packs, offers, and save. Help others achieve overall wellness too and gain financial wellness. Become a mental wellness partner today. Shop now and save. Sign up today by going to our website listed on this page. Thank you for joining us on The Connection Show. We'd appreciate your support. Please go to either our Patreon or our PayPal page to support our show. We love our podcast guests and social media subscribers, so you don't miss any of our shows. Go to our website today at braveheartworkshops.com and our Contact Us page. Click on all our social media links and subscribe to and like all our pages. Our affiliate partners, thank you for your support. Go to our affiliate partners page on our website and order from them today. They're offering discounts when you mention Braveheart. Click on their website links to order from them today.